so now the way it is done is to recognize you can go over that you recognize that you can decompose the partition function just like we did you can decompose the partition function in terms of a matrices and these matrices are very simple matrix these are the matrices that it comes that uh, so these are the diagonal terms and uh, And you can essentially use this matrix to propagate the nearest number correlations to all order. And you do very similar thing that you have done here to the power n. And then, but the, you cannot decompose completely like that I have done here because of the uh, B, uh, B introduce an asymmetry in the problem. The symmetry that I have in this problem that is broken because of this term because here now uh, mm, here two down comes with the same term with two up but here that is reflected here two up and two down are not the same because see B is the magnetic field so when you are going down then magnetic field, if, if the spin is up, then both the two spins down will be unfavorable. So that will come as a plus sign. The otherwise, it both will be both spins up that will come with a negative sign. So this symmetry of this Isaac Hamiltonian in the absence of the magnetic field is broken as it should in this case, in the presence of the magnetic field by this term. Uh, then one uh, can solve this. Let me tell you the by transfer matrix method with the diagonalization. The reason of my not doing it, it uses some theorems of uh, um, uh, eigenvalue analysis, which will take a long time to do. That I am not going to do, but I'll tell you the. And there is some examples done. You will see that particularly what happened when you have uh, these kind of spins, which are kind of things that I have uh, is a little better than. Then how one um, configurations gets energy and how you can calculate the eigenvalues of such things. Uh, but let me tell you the result. Okay. And the result is interesting, but not uh, almost the same kind of thing that we have. So this is the partition function now. It's, that's what I was saying. It includes uh, the calculation of the eigenvalues which you find most of the books and uh, 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 assume the eigenvalues of this matrix this matrix you have to find the eigenvalues of that matrix and uh, then you notice that one eigenvalue is larger than the other eigenvalue and then you can uh, like here these two eigenvalues analysis done here and one is larger than the other one so in the end going to infinity one of them remains but let me tell you the basic result there. Final result is this is the partition function. I q i for Ising in the presence of the magnetic field is a considerably more complicated but still analytically doable. Mm. You can go through this. These have to be done analysis. Then you have to do certain uh, it's not too difficult very similar thing that we did in, uh, in, the, in the absence of the magnetic field. Same factorization and then the uh, sum over all these things. This is the theorem I was saying. I am not comfortable about doing that, that. That quantity is the trace of n to the power n. And then of course you have to have certain kind of unitary. This is a symmetric matrix. Then unitary transformation of this symmetric matrix and then partition function come as this diagonal matrix diagonal to the power n and then that is this to the power n uh, this is then the diagonal matrix to the power n uh, is, is exactly equal to that so I don't want to go through all this but uh, 
these are mathematics you can do and they are not difficult mathematics but you know you have to do them mm. all right so this is the uh, but i this is all given there uh, so the partition function then becomes this thing at one uh, look at that how much more complication we have so in the electric field uh, ma uh, magnetic field is there and then you go to if i would be equal to zero then it, it will go over to the old uh, old form then we can calculate the free energy uh, kvt ln q ising using that ising and then you can get the as i said one of the eigen values one of the eigen values survive because other ones is more so n going to infinity limit this is negligible with respect to that one these are the asymptotic analysis and then you get this uh, free energy and this is very interesting once you have free energy then we can do some work with that we could do something over there in the earlier one that i have worked out here because we did the magnetic field i could not do entropy and i could have done specific heat, but i couldn't do the most important thing that people want which is the magnetization but if i have the free energy i, I can do the magnetization now can you tell me how to get the magnetization from this free energy you know i'm dumb, i know i'm dumping some equations on you but they're not really very difficult beyond the beyond what i have done here was the tricky little thing after that it is same <laughs> though you have to uh, uh, this uh, do the unitary matrix transformation you have to do the eigen value analysis all these things it will take more than more than uh, 40 minutes to do so i'm just avoiding doing it how do i get when i have the free energy how do i get get the magnetization light eh light yeah so i have to all i have to do di db and i get the <coughs> i get the magnetization okay that is done here then magnetization is with respect to magnetic field and h is same as b magnetic moment taken out okay so this is then this quantity then one can calculate going back to same as it this lambda plus and all these things and okay and then you get call that or combine this and y and then we have taken with this with the magnetic field and that that's why you have to take care of the magnetic uh, moment we come here and there change of variable i have to absorb it here because this is the quantity that i need as my a uh, uh, magnetization i want to go back the variable i have in my work which is which is uh, which is uh, this y and uh, y is this quantity uh, beta b <coughs> and then i can take the derivative these are the ugly things that one doesn't want to do in the class but you can do it uh, fortunately it is done here so i can do the derivative of this ln so this it is sorry <laughs> this guy comes in the denominator and you take the derivative you get two terms okay <laughs> they taking derivative of cos and all these things is no certainly not the most pleasant thing in the world uh, so because there are two terms there but you can do it but essentially i think everything is clear here right nothing should be complicated doing the board is uh, complicated it's very really sign i'm mortally afraid of science mm. okay now we get this beautiful expression however at the end of the day uh, you can simplify that that remains this remains and there is <coughs> this gets simplified and uh, i think we have to define the defined variables as x not x may p and q small p and small q and again do that and this sh should become the same as this i think we have to think of we have to go back to e to the power x and e to the power minus x or e to the power y and e to the power minus y and square all this thing then we have to combine term huh? i think here also you have to combine term this and this is the same 
and that is different from this one but whatever this and this is the same so I think there is certain manipulation one needs to do that I have not done that for a very long time but you can do that but at the end of the day you get the uh, magnetic moment which is experimental observable quite easily in these magnetic systems you get a complete analytical form <coughs> that is the main thing that is a cinch and cinch which is as analytic as cosh hyperbolic cosh so and now I plot that against one over temperature now if there are a phase transition what would I expect I'm plotting is one over temperature so uh, this is a high temperature limit and this is a low temperature limit right if there is a magnetic transition, uh, paramagnetic to ferromagnetic transition, then what will happen? Now tell me, what is the ferromagnetic state? Tell me, what is the ferromagnetic state? See, one of the reasons that it, it, uh, we, it, physics course, they learn it very quickly, very rigorously in your <coughs> uh, first year. You learned it, but not in terms of spins in your in your schools. They should have taught it in terms of spins. They need not solve the Ising model, but they should have told you about the Ising model. Hmm. But that's not done, not in Indian uh, context. But Ising is a very beautiful thing. And this, the, the little thing, sorry, the little thing I did, no. the little thing that I did here could have been done in high school also. But doesn't matter what the solution. Forget about that, what has not been done, not done. Now tell me what is the ferromagnetic state. See, we are doing phase transition, and now the most important phase transition is the magnetic transition. Then metal insulator transition, which is a huge amount of industry runs on that, right? Then semiconductor, superconductivity. Did you did anybody teach you magnetism? Huh? Magnetism has not been taught at all. But in, 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 in the integrated PhD, it has not been taught yet. They should have taught one magnetism course. Uh, electrostatics, uh, electromagnetism, because I we had that a little bit in our honors course. We had a one small 16, a, a half of a course in Calcutta University, uh, magnetism, and then we I took a lot of courses there of physics department but I tell you that it's really rewarding those of you going to material science and physical chemistry I hope some of you are going there because that's the most fascinating area now and let me tell you organic chemistry is not that fascinating anymore. it's going on and on and on the same kind of synthesis well you can get some job but it's very boring so most exciting things are happening at the world at the world of material science and world of biology materials is particularly exciting now as you can see your TV getting changed, your mobile getting changed, every technology is getting changed in every two, three years. Huge amount of work going on in all these uh, companies, IBM, Samsung, they should do the more, more of this. Now the artificial intelligence is going integrated with, uh, thing. okay. Ferromagnetic is that when all these spins are parallel to each other. That's the ferromagnetic state. And ferromagnetic state is that when these spins are random. So ferromagnetic state is the state we call ordered state. And primary is the disorder state. So what you are talking of an order disorder transition. It's very important thing. Please write it down. Order disorder transition is an example of order disorder transition, which is uh, same in uh, melting, which is same when you have a beta bra brass, which I believe is zinc and uh, copper, right? And that <coughs> undergoes a fabulous uh, transition with a huge change of material properties. So. The, and we use that material properties many times you see when you use the valve safety valve that we put an alloy and a little change of temperature change the properties of the alloy that is the basic of this many of the valve in these complex uh, systems so these are important thing to know you know uh, because chemists make these things and then we just give it to uh, for physicists to do everything right that uh, if we understand we could have make much better material probably okay so uh, the order disorder transition then what would happen in a real system you'd see that there would be a, a uh, hysteresis there would be sudden jump of magnetization 
uh, this is one over temperature so it will be other way around if i put temperature it will be like that otherwise it will be uh, like that uh, go lucky like that so that's a uh, and this system so the hysteresis and as i told you for system that told uh, shows hysteresis is the uh, first order phase transitions mm -hmm. however the beauty you see in a, in a, in a two dimensional system that even in the absence of the magnetic field there is a uh, order disorder transition where the specific heat compresses the uh, magnetic susceptibility uh, so that that diverges and uh, in, 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 that's the characteristics of an order disorder or a critical phenomena so the one of the thing that i think model can use us and that i'm going to use to take you to a critical phenomena okay so before we go so this is the as far one dimensionalizing model goes i have derived a part of it the basic basic <coughs> basic thing uh, and i have it, it is given here we'll put it in the a if we want to make a little changes i'll probably make a little changes on this chapter and send it to you uh, but you can see there's a unitary transformation going over to diagonal then uh, <coughs> to the bar n is lambda one lambda n and here you have to work it out find out the eigenvalues and here the same thing i have done exactly same thing does here that you go to a factorization the same factorization comes here so that allows me to write it into array same thing into array i wrote here okay but then you have to go by again value analysis i could sum it up here because i did have this symmetry which is not here okay so now uh this is a hugely important thing and extremely difficult thing at the same time the two dimensionalizing model i will just tell you the result now and i'll do something else which uh, i want to teach you something else uh, which is the other part of ising model many other techniques which are very useful so the, the uh, but let me continue a little bit with two dimensionalizing model uh, i'll come back to the two dimensionalizing model in a, in a normal course of event i would not have two dimensionalizing model at this stage uh, i will have uh, little later and that's the way i did so two dimensionalizing model when i have a square lattice and i put these pins the beauty of this is that this model exhibits a phase transition and this played a very important role as i told you in the whole history of uh, almost history of science that can be solved exactly and that is the it was done by the evolution of the partition function is extremely highly non trivial the feat was achieved by ulsager still considered the most brutal and difficult calculation done in the entire physics and that has a little complicated free and functional which we are not going to and but most important thing that has a this magnetization transition this is the model shows and this is what you see in experiment and it has this fall has certain exponent which is called critical exponent and that is the things critical phenomena that we do a, a little later study of the critical now i want to do not the solution this is a highly non trivial solution but <coughs> i want to do uh, this is what i want to do now and i want to start uh, is there are certain ways okay um, there is a very important thing in magnetization which is the curie point now can you tell me what is the curie point i i i really strongly recommend that you guys i'll send you some material but you read up the magnetism it is really not fair not to know about magnetism hmm? that uh, that is not fair even if you are doing uh, uh, i i at least indicate phd students are uh, after all doing phd right and you would need even you are doing organic chemistry the magnetic properties you have to study and many of the things the magnetic properties of organic materials or organic that you you know why magnetic is so important magnetic properties are studied the reason is that sometimes you have a lone pair or some character characterization you need so you need to know the basics of magnetism okay so these are the 
Uh, we'll make a beginning. This, so the way I'll go now, let me write down and I'll come back and forth. Few things you should certainly do. Go through the uh, derivation. This will take you time, about an hour. Or maybe a little bit more, but it's worth doing. So the flow that uh, that I'm going to do is we have done one dimensional Ising model. We will not do and we done the bandization and everything and so there is no phase transition. No phase transition. There was a little bit hint of that why it's not a phase transition that will come back later. Essentially because the new phase cannot be stabilized with only two nearest neighbors. And next what we will do is they call mean field theories. A huge list here. In this context of lattice is Bragg Williams. Then the same as Van der Waals. A much simpler and more elegant way is Landau. Landau theory, I th we did not do Landau theory yet, right? Oh, so we'll do the Landau theory after we finish these things. So in the mean field theories, is you have done one example of mean field theory, that's what I'm asking, Curie temperature of the molecular field. <coughs> what is the Curie temperature? And also called, no. Curie-wise theory or equation. What is that? Magnetization equal to 1 minus T by Tc. Remember that? The magnetization goes to 0. But magnetization goes to 0 with exponent 1. If I go T minus Tc, then T minus T minus 1. And that is uh, not correct. People found that uh, we saw the Judaizing is a very different experiment. Okay. So the Curie uh, theory, the way it was developed, we'll see that was a, a mean field theory. Mean field theory is the following uh, concept that we have a is a very important concept, <coughs> but fortunately they are understandable in a very simple physical way. And that's what we'll do. And you will like the Brad Williams. I once, I do, I'm not bragging, but I once had the good fortune to teach at Harvard a really formal course, a, a course like that, StatMac. And uh, there's a great hall called Pfizer Hall, where many great people have presented their results. And the, you know, next to it was a great uh, Bob Woodward's laboratory. When you had that legion, Lipscomb, and all the legions are there. But when you teach at that hall, the beauty of that is that when I go to teach, I used to teach from 11 to 12, three times a week. Everything is pakka. That means there, there are nine, nine, uh, one screen and um, screen can be taken out and nine boards. Nine board in the following sense, uh, three row and yeah, three row, three column. And uh, Press, oh, you start from one side, do this, do that, then three goes up, you press, and then one. But more important, that's <coughs> not. But what I'm saying, when you enter, the secretary, I told them, secretary, in the morning, I want my uh, coffee for me and my students when they are rich. So there is coffee there. And uh, everything was clean, all the chalks were ready. You know, that's what the secretaries are supposed to do. Here, God knows what the secretaries do. Most of the time, they don't do anything. And we are not assigned job to them. So coming back, so it is now I have got something nice. I complain a lot, but that's things improve by complaining only. Okay, so the mean field theory means 
I have, so they, let's say nearest neighbor. So I have spins here, spins here, spins here, spins here, and this is the first nearest neighbor, right? And second nearest neighbor are these four. Okay. Now, all the everywhere there is a spin and spin, sir. So, what is the main effect of the uh, of the of the other spins on my central spin? Think a little, because this will be continue with the next class. So, let us consider a very high dimensional solid higher than three dimension. You can call stop at three, but you know, in, in your mind you can consider. Then number of nearest neighbor increasing. Okay, here I have four. 3D in simple cube could be six like that. Now, then I can have a magnetic field or not have a magnetic field. These spins are, what are they doing on this? They are interacting. How they are interacting? They are interacting their moments. Now for a moment, if I say I freeze this one, then I'll add the effects of all these things. What my spin will see then? My spin will see an average effect. So that is average and mean is the same, right? So I if I then I'll have a, my spin here is seeing a mean field. So if all of them are up, then my spin here will also want to be half. So now can I take a description, little bit coarse grain, means opaque description, little bit make it little, little uh, um, not completely microscopic, little bit less, micro, we call it coarse graining, where I would be able to talk of the, I write the Hamiltonian now in terms of the mean field. Now what I do, this guy is also acting on that guy. I can construct another mean field and I can beat, uh, make them self consistent. Okay, that is one probably layer upper theory. So this is the way one can get beautiful solutions. They show the phase transitions. We don't have to do as much work and I told you anyway, three dimensional Ising model, we cannot solve anything. Nobody in the world has been able to solve. But you will see this is just like Van der Waals equation. So we'll do these beautiful mean field theories. They are the very favorite of people because this is much easier to do the calculations and much easier to apply. Otherwise, you have to do numerical in three dimension. And these mean field theories, as I said, very favorite of us, and we will continue with that in the next class. We'll